anyone who would who would mold his life around the belief that a loved one can return from the grave only deserves to be pitied. But do you know why I believe that? Because you made me believe it. We are never made to do anything. You were something unique in my experience. You gave me my reason for being. Now, if you're going to tell me that you're going to reject me and why, then I'll believe you again. But it, it's got to be that way. Because I love you more than I've ever loved you. I will tell you one thing. And only one thing, and I will tell it to you for the last time. I am not Angelique. I'll never accept that! Then you must leave here and never try to see me again. No. If necessary, I will use force to get you out of here. Then use it. All right. I will. You've been through enough for one night. What's wrong? That man, Bruno, he's back. He's what? He's here. He's, he's here now in my room. Well, it's reassuring at least to hear you refer to it as your room. I told you that you were forbidden to enter this house. Quentin, you know what I think? I think that it's possible that she fooled us all at that seance and didn't die at all. You're stark raving mad. Oh, no. I'm anything but mad, and you know that. You know, if you go on ranting and raving about people returning from the grave, people are going to begin wondering about you, Bruno. Well, let them wonder. I know what I know. Now, I'm surprised that uh, you don't realize who she really is. But then, uh, you never really did know her as well as I did. Did you? I'm warning you. Now get out of here before I have you carried out! The master of Collinwood is spoken. All right. I'll retire to my cozy little cottage and live to fight another day. You're already living on borrowed time. You know, that sounds suspiciously like a threat. Interpret it any way you like. Just get out and stay out. Well, we'll meet again. We always do. Good night, my dear. With each passing day, I draw steadily closer, morally and intellectually, to the inescapable truth that man is not truly one, but truly two, the one being good and the other evil. Now I am prepared to prove that each of these elements can be housed in separate identities. In separate identities. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right. Come out where I can see you. I must admit I find this a trifle embarrassing. Oh, Mr. Gladstone. I can't say I'm surprised. My instincts told me you couldn't be trusted. I would my instincts were as good. Your young lady told me that you wouldn't be back until late, and I believed her. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. Now, how long have you been here? Long enough to discover that I have contributed to a most intriguing experiment. You have contributed nothing. You were paid for that ingredient you delivered. You really must forgive me, Dr. Longworth. I just couldn't contain my curiosity. Well, has your curiosity been satisfied now? I regret to say that it hasn't. Your handwriting leaves something to be desired. However, I understand a bit more of your theory now. I, too, share in your interest in the elevation of the fellow man. I could be of enormous help to you. I don't think we have anything in common, Mr. Gladstone. Now, will you please go? I have a great deal of work to do today. I wish you'd think it over for a while. I'll be around for a few days. I think that you have embarked on a very lonely and perhaps dangerous course. You may find yourself in need of a friend along the way. Well, I'll keep that in mind. Good night. some tea. Thank you. Well, I hope we're finally rid of that man Bruno. Oh, you can be sure we have. Oh, isn't there any way in the world you can force him off your property? Mm, not according to my lawyer. I've been meaning to ask you something, Quentin, about something he said while he was here. Mm. He mentioned a seance, do you recall? Yes. I was wondering if it had anything to do with my sister's death. Quentin, have I brought up a painful memory? No, you have a perfect right to inquire about anything concerning your sister. But would you rather not discuss it? If you don't mind. No, of course I don't ready to be put to the test. I am aware of the potential power of the drug I have created and of the danger I face. Perhaps I am even risking death, but I am not afraid. Ha <laughs> ha! 
John Yeager. He could be someone I met last night, after I took the compound. But I don't remember anything about last night. Why? What could have gone wrong? What can I do for you, Mr. Paxton? I'd like to ask you some questions about last night. What about last night, Mr. Paxton? First of all, I have something rather unpleasant to tell you. I believe you have a fiancé named Sabrina Stewart. Has anything happened to oh, Sabrina? Now, don't be alarmed, Doctor. She apparently had a very bad scare, but she wasn't physically hurt. It seems that Carolyn Loomis was on her way from a party when she discovered Miss Stewart wandering in a dazed condition on the Collins estate. So uh, we questioned Miss Stewart and she mumbled about a strange man that uh, attacked her in her room. Oh, good Lord. Fortunately, a neighbor heard the commotion and uh, frightened the intruder off. Did, did Sabrina describe this man, do you? No, she really never got a look at him. But uh, a neighbor saw him. Doctor, I'd like to know if you left your house last night. Mr. Paxton, you don't think oh, I no, had anything no, to... No, 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 it couldn't be you. You don't even fit the description. Well, then why are you asking me what I did last night? Well, after we left Miss Stewart's apartment, we got another report of an assault on Clover Street. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that, but I... I mean, I don't see what all these questions have to do with me. Well, in both cases, the description that the men gave us uh, seemed to be the same person. Then at about three o'clock, one of my men saw a man answering that description here in this neighborhood. He followed him. And he entered this house at exactly 310. This house? Did you have a visitor at that hour? No. Were you in the house then? Oh, yeah, yes. As, as a matter of fact, I was. I went to bed at about midnight. Mm -hmm. did, did, did this witness tell you what this man looked like? Yes, what he looked like and how he got in the house. He, uh, he let himself in. By himself, with his own key. That's impossible. My housekeeper and I are the only ones with keys to my place. Well, well, nothing is impossible for an accomplished burger, a burglar, assuming that's what the man was. <laughs> you know, he could have made his own skeleton key. Did you, uh, find anything disturbed or missing in this house? Uh, no, no, nothing at all. It's rather strange. You see, uh... I left my man at your front door until dawn, and I placed another man at the back door. The stranger never did come back out. Now, either he's still somewhere in the house, or uh, there's another exit that we don't know about. There is, Mr. Paxton. Yes. There, there, there is another door, this one. Uh -huh. now, this door leads to a courtyard outside. Now, I, I always keep this locked on the inside. But this morning, I came in. And, and, and it was wide open. I see. So he could have made his escape through that door without my man spotting. Very possibly. 
Well, I suggest that you have your locks changed as soon as possible. I will. I will immediately. Oh, Mr. Paxton, uh, <clears throat> yeah, could you, could you let should know uh, what this man looks like so I can be on the lookout too? Well, as I said, the descriptions were vague, but everyone agreed that he was a big man, very broad in the shoulders, and uh, curiously enough, uh, uh, very well dressed. Oh, and he had a mustache. Mustache? Mm-hmm. That's the one thing that all three witnesses remembered about his face. Well, I, uh, sorry that I disturbed you so early, Doctor. No, 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 not at all. Now, tell me, did, did they take Sabrina to her room? Yes, as far as I know, uh, Mrs. Loomis is with her now. Thank you. Well, thanks for your cooperation, Doctor. Not at all. Not I'll at call all. you as soon as we get any progress. Please do. Thank you. Good day, Doctor. Good day. Uh, Everyone agreed he was a big man, very broad in the shoulders, extremely well-dressed, and he had a mustache. anything I can get for you? I want Cyrus. I've been trying to reach him all night, but his phone doesn't answer. I don't understand. Neither do I. I better try him again. Cyrus, where have you been? I've been trying to reach you all I know, night. I'm sorry. I, I kept the phone on. I turned it off. I, I, the police told me what happened. Sabrina! I've been waiting for you. Oh, Sabrina, I'm sorry. But, but I'm, I'm here now. Can't you tell me what happened? It was evil. Evil? It makes no sense. My ring. My ring. He took your, your engagement ring. I don't understand. She's been this way since I found her last night. I, I'd better call a druggist and order a sedative. Yes, I think a good night's sleep should, should help her a lot. <laughs> 